Five years ago, I made a video about how you can find little baby eggs for monarch butterflies on milkweed plants like this and shelter them to increase the rate of survival from 3% to over 90%, almost 100%, depending on how careful and good you are at giving them everything that they need. And at the time, I didn't really know very much about or mention OE which is an important parasite to be aware of because while you're trying to help your monarch friends, you could do more harm than good, especially depending on where you live. Now, OE is a parasite that replicates inside monarch butterflies and can affect them. We can kind of think of it like the measles of butterflies. Measles is a virus, this is a parasite. They, they are very different. Don't actually look at the way that they affect humans, measles versus butterflies, OE. But you can think of it in that same very contagious, harmful to populations, can cause death kind of thing. And OE is responsible for tens of millions of monarch butterflies dying every year. So it is a really important problem. So OE, which replicates inside the developing butterfly, will spread from butterfly to butterfly or butterfly to caterpillar, egg into caterpillar, through spores. These spores lie dormant. They are one cell. They're microscopic, extremely microscopic. And when they are inside the abdomen of the butterfly, they'll live between the scales of a butterfly. And the only way to really know if they are there or not is to use a microscope. We can't really rely on how healthy the butterfly looks. So you could be spreading OE if you're not rearing your butterflies properly at home. Now where I live in southeastern Ontario, OE is much less prevalent. The farther a butterfly needs to migrate, the less likely there will be OE in the local populations. And I live at one of the most northern places that monarch butterflies need to migrate up to. And that's because a sick butterfly can't fly as much. So they are likely to die along the way. They are not going to make it up here. So at baseline, the butterflies I see are going to have a slightly lower prevalence of OE than if I was much further south. In parts of southern Florida, where butterflies don't migrate very far at all, OE can affect all the way up to about 100% of monarch butterflies in certain places. OE is also a lot more prevalent in California, which is the western population of monarch butterflies, because there's a shorter migration distance that they go to every year. North and south is much shorter within California than in the east, where I am, all the way down to Mexico up to southeastern Ontario and other places, but that's where I specifically am. But interestingly and concerningly, OE has increased quite rapidly since about the year 2000. And this has been studied and it's been looked at to see what in nature caused this. And it looks like it's us. We started caring about monarch butterflies. We started to have novelty of monarch butterflies being released in weddings and things like that. And monarch breeding got a lot more popular around that time. And when monarchs are bred large numbers together, then the spread of OE, much like if you think of humans in large numbers together, if one of them has measles, all of those humans can be exposed to measles all of those butterflies can be exposed to OE, spread OE, infect each other. Some of those butterflies are going to be deformed right away, be very sick right away, but others are going to seem fairly asymptomatic and just be spreading OE and making the problem worse and worse and worse. Some groups say that we shouldn't be bringing butterflies inside to shelter them at all because while we can increase their population, that's more harmful if we're increasing the spread of OE at the same time. I say that there are other benefits, environmental benefits in terms of more monarchs, but also in terms of connecting us to nature, which cannot be overstated in this day and age. My children are enamored with the butterflies they feel very connected to nature. They're very in awe of the butterflies. They're always talking about how to help them and other pollinators and other nature things that they see all around us. 
So I do think that there is a lot of value in seeing how butterflies develop at home and I don't want to discourage people from doing that. But I do want to encourage you to help stop the spread of OE or limit it or certainly not exacerbate the problem. And there are three important ways that you can do that. Number one, in your garden or your spaces where you're planting things, only plant native milkweed or only allow native milkweeds to grow. There are many varieties in my garden. I have swamp milkweed, I have common milkweed, both native to my area of the world. There is a plant called tropical milkweed, which is non-native to North America. It is unfortunately very beautiful, which makes it an attractive plant for the garden. It also has, in North America, a longer growing season than native milkweeds. Whereas native milkweeds will start to go dormant and shut down for the winter and tell the butterflies in their pattern, hey, it's time for you to start migrating south. Tropical milkweed does not. It will continue to flower longer than native milkweeds, which will confuse the butterflies and disrupt their natural migration patterns. This also, because they have a longer lifespan, helps to increase the spread of OE to the new and developing butterflies. So please only plant native milkweeds in your areas, no tropical milkweed if you want to help support the butterflies. Number two, there are companies where you can buy mass quantities of monarch butterflies, which people may consider to be very beautiful to release at a graduation or a wedding and have them magically floating around. But because those butterflies are mass bred, they can easily spread OE to each other and then to the surrounding areas where they are released as well if there wasn't so much OE in that spot to begin with. So please do not do that. If you want to have butterflies in your photos, it's very easy to edit them in afterwards. Please don't support or encourage mass breeding of monarch butterflies. And then that goes for how you're going to do it in your home as well. So when I am bringing butterfly eggs and caterpillars inside, I keep them in separate containers or certainly only a few to a container, certainly less than 10. I don't think I've ever had more than 10. I might have two or three if I start to run out of containers, but you want to keep them separate. So if you do happen to have an OE infected butterfly, you will hopefully keep that butterfly quarantined. With measles, you quarantine people. With OE, you quarantine your butterflies and you won't know if they potentially have OE, maybe ever. It's also really important to clean your containers properly so that the spores, the single-celled spores of OE, can't go from container to caterpillar to all the butterflies that may be in that container over your season. So you wanna do that with bleach. If you have glass jars, they are much easier to clean. You want a 20% bleach solution. So in 100 milliliters of fluid, that would be 20 milliliters of bleach to 80 milliliters of water. If it's plastic, plastic is very porous. If you look under a microscope, there's lots of little places that particularly something as small as a single celled OE, protozoan, can hide. So you want to soak any plastic containers in that 20% solution of bleach at least overnight. And then you can rinse it with water and get it all ready for your next caterpillars. If you are bringing in leaves from milkweed and you're concerned that maybe there's already OE on the milkweed, maybe you have an egg, what happens if the butterfly is infected with OE when it lays an egg, it also lays a couple of spores so that when the egg hatches, the little baby caterpillar will eat the leaf, the spores and the egg around and then be infected itself. So you can actually wash your milkweed and wash eggs on milkweed, not caterpillars, just the eggs, in a now 10% solution of bleach. So that would be 10 milliliters of bleach to 90 milliliters of water only for about 20 minutes, then wash it off with water gently if there's an egg really, really carefully and then you can be reasonably assured that you've gotten rid of any OE spores. So if you follow those tips, particularly if you live south of where I live, again, it's not as big a concern here, although I am careful. The farther south you are, the shorter the migration distance of the butterfly, 
the more likely the butterflies you see in your garden may be infected with OE and you may inadvertently spread it to other butterflies that you hatch. The only way to know for sure if a butterfly is affected with OE is to get a little bit of sticky tape, put it on the belly of your adult butterfly and look under a microscope. Otherwise, we can't be sure. There are some organizations that are very interested in this and in fact will send you kits to be backyard scientists. There's a project Monarch Health and a website monarchparasites.org that I encourage you to go visit if you want to learn more. Well, we need to assume that all butterflies and caterpillars could be infected with OE and prevent them from spreading to others. Sometimes we can be pretty sure as the butterfly develops that it does have OE or some other kind of sickness. You may see that the pupae doesn't look right. There are some dark splotches in it or when the butterfly emerges, it may not have the beautiful wings that we expect. They may be crumpled, they look shriveled, almost like they've been burned and shrunk. I'm not talking about the kind of crumpled that we expect when they are folded. They are folded when a butterfly first emerges, but very quickly over the span of minutes to hours, those wings spread out and are beautiful butterfly shaped like we expect. It's when they can't unfold, when they remain crumpled or deformed, or you get earlier signs that something is off. Those pupae, those butterflies need to be removed from the rest of the butterfly population, including those outdoors. If that happens, it's unfortunately too late for that butterfly. We can't cure that butterfly. The best thing that we can do is put it out of its misery and keep it from affecting any other butterflies and very carefully sterilize anything that that butterfly or caterpillar may have come in contact with as it was growing. So there are your tips on how to limit OE. I don't wanna discourage anybody from raising butterflies. I still think it is a wonderful thing to do safely. And however your garden grows, keep growing as a gardener.